Greetings to you, greetings to you, everyone. God will bless us in our worship. He will guide us, He will bless us. We are here in His presence. We are one with God's love. Greetings to you, greetings to you, greetings to you, everyone. So welcome to this service. The service is going to follow through without further announcements, uh, but the, um, the people that will be taking part will be the ones who will be uh, mostly visible on screen, but there will be others also too. So we are going to now be joining with uh, a song and then the, the the words will be on the screen for each song do join in if you'd like to it is time to get together as a nation and family let's forget our differences and let us work Unity. Let us build all Vanuatu with love and unity. We are family, we are one, we are me, Vanuatu. From the north down to the south, all the Sisters, we are strong. Let us build up Vanuatu with love and unity. We are family, we are one, we are me. meaning country that stands up, is a Y-shaped collection of over 80 islands in the South Pacific Ocean. Australia lies to the west. Inhabitants are known as Nivanuatu. Most of these 310,000 residents are rural. Many are of Melanesian descent with a Polynesian minority. Port Vila is the largest city with 45,000 residents. Vanuatu people use just under 100 dialects, Children usually start with their village language, or Bislama. English and French are used for school instruction. Vanuatu's flag is green, yellow, black, and red. These colors stand for vegetation, gospel light, the people, and the blood of boars and men. The emblem consists of boar tusks and crossed namale leaves symbolizing peace. Vanuatu has a tropical humid climate moderated by trade winds between May and October. Temperatures in the northern islands average 27 degrees Celsius with an annual rainfall of about 3,000 millimeters. Common natural disasters include earthquakes, cyclones, and volcanic eruptions. Rising sea levels threaten to erode the land. The World Day of Prayer artwork, created by Vanuatuan artist Juliet Pita, illustrates the weather and the resiliency of the people. The painting shows a mother bending and praying over her child during Cyclone Pam in 2015. The waves crash over her, but a palm tree with strong roots bends protectively. Three quarters of these mountainous islands, outlined with narrow coastal plains, are covered. <laughs> Sorry. Greetings to you. Greetings. 
Vanuat. Vanuatu people use just under 100 dialects. Children usually start with their village language, or Bislama. English and French are used for school instruction. Vanuatu's flag is green, yellow, black, and red. These colors stand for vegetation, gospel light, the people, and the blood of boars and men. The emblem consists of boar tusks and crossed namale leaves symbolizing peace. Vanuatu has a tropical humid climate moderated by trade winds between May and October. Temperatures in the northern islands average 27 degrees Celsius with an annual rainfall of about 3,000 millimeters. Common natural disasters include earthquakes, cyclones, and volcanic eruptions. Rising sea levels threaten to erode the land. The World Day of Prayer artwork, created by Vanuatuan artist Juliet Pita, illustrates the weather and the resiliency of the people. The painting shows a mother bending and praying over her child during Cyclone Pam in 2015. The waves crash over her, but a palm tree with strong roots bends protectively. Three quarters of these mountainous islands, outlined with narrow coastal plains, are covered by natural vegetation. Primary lower forests include tropical lowland evergreens and small areas of broad-leaved deciduous. The giant banyan tree on Tana Island is one of the largest trees in the world. Less than 2% of the land is arable and is used primarily for cattle grazing and cash crops rather than vegetable gardens. This has contributed to malnutrition. Hibiscus, the unofficial flower of Vanuatu, is plentiful. Bats are the only native mammals. An interesting Vanuatu bird is the megapode, which lays its eggs in hot volcanic soil. Its young, which emerge fully feathered, can run immediately and fly within 24 hours. Sanctuaries have been created for turtles to restore their dwindling population. Colorful schools of small fish are a feature in many coral gardens and reefs. Nearby large fish include bonito, yellowfin tuna, and sailfish. Staple foods include yam, taro, banana, coconut, sugarcane, tropical nuts, greens, pork, fowl, and seafood. The national ceremonial dish is lap lap. It is a pudding made of grated root crops or plantain mixed with coconut milk and sometimes greens and meat and wrapped in leaves. Vanuatu ancestors lived on their own islands, in their own villages. Each had their own government, languages, food, styles of clothing, traditional healers, and midwives. Homes had thatched roofs. Although people had been living on the islands for 3,000 years, in 1774, Captain James Cook named the islands New Hebrides, as they reminded him of his Scottish homelands. Blackbirding was prevalent between 1847 and 1904. South Pacific Islanders were kidnapped, tricked, or coerced into working for very little or no pay on plantations in Queensland, Fiji, and Hawaii. By 1906, New Hebrides became a colony with a more centralized government ruled jointly by Great Britain and France. Political independence and a homegrown constitution were established in 1980. Vanuatu has a literacy rate of 64%. Secondary education enrollment was 35% in 2015. There are strategies to increase this figure significantly by 2030. Vanuatu's economy is largely based on tourism, construction, and offshore financial services. Big hotels and resorts are owned by foreigners. A minor income earning activity is Nagol which involves men climbing flimsy 100-foot towers and diving headfirst into empty space with nothing to break their fall but vines tied to their ankles. Others sell their traditional weaving. Manufacturing industries contribute only 5 to 9 percent of the gross domestic product. Education curriculum points youth to white-collar jobs. In the current Vanuatu democracy, the Constitution provides for gender equity but there is limited political will to implement it. In the 2020 federal election, no women were voted into power. Women represent 40% of the labor force in both public and private sectors and are often the primary caregivers for family members. Gender-based violence is a serious issue affecting women and girls. 
Approximately 60% of women in Vanuatu have experienced some form of physical and or sexual violence. Access to healthy foods, safe drinking water, and adequate sanitation are concerns, especially for children in many areas of this republic. Most deaths in those under five years of age are due to malnutrition. There has also been an increase in stunted growth and development in children. Before the arrival of Christian missionaries in the 19th century, each island had its own god. They believed there was a creator somewhere in the heavens and sacrifices were offered to that being. Christianity is now the major religion at 83%. World Day of Prayer was introduced to Vanuatu by two female Canadian missionaries in 1946. Current focuses are employment and educational opportunities for young rural women, maternal and children's health, and cancer. In 2021, we pray with all Vanuatu women. Vanuatu. Having heard that interesting background about Vanuatu, we now hear a verse from scripture as we continue in our worship. Let's hear the first verse of Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. Happy is everyone who trusts God, the house builder. Amen. Our service focuses on the people of Vanuatu, a small country located in the South Pacific Ocean, whose languages, values and spirituality originate mostly from Melanesian and Polynesian cultures. The black and white sandy beaches coral reefs with colourful fish, lovely birds, fruits and nuts in the forest all make the islands a pristine environment. Even though they are vulnerable to frequent tropical storms, earthquakes, cyclones, tsunamis and volcanic eruptions. All the islands and villages used to have their own chiefs and style of governance their own gods, their own languages, and thatched houses made from leaves and trees, felled using stone axes. Women and men would come together to discuss major issues at a village meeting house called Faria. A republic formed in 1980, after gaining independence from a French and British condominium government. Today, Vanuatu proudly waves its flag and displays its coat of arms for anyone to read, In God We Stand, which in Bislama is Long God Yomi Stanap. Long God Yomi Stanap. When I was a missionary partner out in Australia myself, I met this lady called Bridgeta. She's become a dear friend of mine. And now she is a mission partner in Vanuatu with her husband, Jamie, and they have a little girl. And they have sent us a little video to show us life, what it is like in Vanuatu.
A prayer of thanksgiving. Let us be thankful for the great things God has done. Holy, holy, holy God, creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. You are present in the history of your people from the beginning to today. Loving God on whom Vanuatu stands, we adore you. Thank you for the fellowship with each other and with sisters around the world gathered on this World Day of Prayer. Thank you for the great and wonderful things in our lives and in our nations. You grant us authority, wisdom, knowledge and understanding to care for all beautiful islands and countries. Thank you for the fertile lands, for the fresh air, clean environment, beautiful sunshine, blue seas and still waters of the Vanuatu Islands. Thank you for the sweet melody of the birds, the sound of land animals and the mystery of the fish in the sea and rivers. Thank you for the waterfalls that rain down their waters and serenely declare to us your greatness and power. Thank you for the sound of children singing, laughing and shouting, and for the prayers and songs of the old and the young, which manifest the joy of your love. Praise, honour and glory be unto you alone forever. Life-giving God, receive our praise. Father, we love to seek your face. We love to hear your voice. Let us confess our wrong actions to God, who is faithful and just, and ask for forgiveness. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We stand before your house of grace to confess our sins. We confess that we have listened to your word, but have not acted on it. Often do the things we ought not to do, and leave undone the things we ought to do. We face adversities and challenges in our homes and nations. We try to build our homes, thinking we are building on the words of Jesus Christ, but actually we have built on the sand. We want to be changed so that we will do what is right and just. Creator God, we confess that we have polluted the environment and harmed the sea creatures by throwing rubbish into their habitats. We endanger the marine life and ruin sustainable livelihoods. We confess and regret our actions and we commit to fulfil the mandate to be good stewards of your creation. We know we can change. In the UK, we're often drawn by uncertainties and fear instead of living with integrity and standing up against injustice. We need the presence of your Holy Spirit to cleanse and renew us once more. God, hear our prayer. A prayer of commitment. God is looking for a house to live in. What is this house that you would build for me? That's from Isaiah 66, the first verse. We come humbly before you and pray that you will grant us your spirit of wisdom and knowledge. Teach us to discern the truth. Lead and guide us. 
to live in a way that is pleasing and acceptable to you. Trusting in you, we know we can change. Help us to build our lives on your foundation with windows that look out to the world, with a door that opens to welcome all, with mortar which binds us together, with a roof that shelters us through the storms of life. We humbly offer ourselves to be a house that you can dwell in. By the power of your word, transform our lives and our nations. Make us like a household of justice and peace. Gracious God, accept our commitment. Father, I want to be with you and do the things you do. Father, I want to speak the words that you are speaking to. going to share some hear some voices from Vanuatu read by different local people here I think Mary is going to read first I think uh, Tom is going to read instead. So if uh, you could unmute yourself, Tom. Thank you. My name is Rachel. I am the second child from a family of eight. I left school at the end of year six as there was no money to continue my education. My family educated my older brother, but not me, as I am the second born and the girl. <laughs> One day I heard there was a sewing class for the girl at a local center. I applied and was accepted, but my father had no money to pay the fees. I was disheartened, but I did not have my own money to finance my studies. I sincerely desired to enhance my education, but there was no opportunity in a formal school system. Then I turned my attention to the church to fulfill my aspiration to learn. I joined the youth group, attended Bible studies and later became involved with women's ministry. With this determination and faith in God, I found ways to educate myself and even acquired skills to earn a living to provide for my family. Other women have done the same. I now make items and sell them at Mama's Markets. With this income, I'm able to care for my family, my husband and three children, which God has blessed me with. I praise God for the blessings in my life. I thank God for being the source of my strength and for helping me put into practice what I have learned. I have become strong and wise in the Lord. Thank you. In Vanuatu, many children in rural areas walk long distances to go to school. Some have to leave home and attend boarding school from a very young age. Education for all is not mandatory and equal across the schooling for boys and girls is still in progress. While Bislama is a common language for most in Vanuatu, 
with many similar regional languages spoken across the islands. Official schooling is given in either French or English. What a contrast to the UK, where all boys and girls have the opportunity to attend school, usually near their homes or a short bus or train ride away. Where boarding school is a privilege and a choice, not a dreaded necessity and where more languages are being used for instruction as our population grows and changes. My name is Mosi. My little brother and I grew up in a single parent home. When my mother remarried, she left us with our grandparents. When my father remarried, he took us to live with his new family. After our stepmother gave birth to her children, her attitude towards us changed altogether. With more children to feed and not enough room in the house for all of us, I had to find my own food in the streets and sleep outside the house in a shack. I used an old sack as a blanket to protect me from the cold. I met some Christians who told me that God loved me. I could not understand this kind of love in the midst of my suffering, but I decided to trust. I trusted that God would take care of me, even though my family was not sheltering me. This trust grew inside me and became the foundation of my life. I am strong in my Christian faith and share my story with others that we should trust in God and his provision. May everyone have a place they call home. Today, I pray for children who like me grew up almost by themselves. May we all recognize that our God loves them. May they know God's love. Vanuatu's estimated population growth is one of the highest in the Pacific region. Malnutrition is a concern in both rural and urban areas. The tradition of growing organic food in gardens is strong. However, the food industries of powdered milk and junk food are impacting the health of our babies and children. Even though many things in the UK are different, our growing population faces similar challenges and threats to the well-being and health of our children. My name is Jack Linda. I come from a rural village. From a young age, I dreamt of working in tourism. I travelled to Port Villa to get a job in hospitality, but I don't have the training to get my dream job. I have no family here, so I am living on the outskirts of the city. I lack the money for proper accommodation, food, or to return back to my village. I know that this is not the plan God has for me, but I don't know what to do. I pray that the rural areas of Vanuatu might be valued and that young people find the opportunities they search for their own communities. I trust that God will provide for young people to grow and contribute to the well-being of Vanuatu. With few employment options in rural areas, young people have to migrate to towns and cities. They often arrive with minimal education and no vocational skills. And so employment is difficult to find. This creates a generation that seems no, uh, sees no future. There is a need for policies and programs 
for the better of, for betterment of rural areas so that young people can be educated and find employment in their own communities. Villages and rural communities in the UK face their own challenges as access to transportation and services is cut back. As in Vanuatu, many young people in the UK face an unknown future, which too often involves prospects of unemployment and uncertainty. Let us hear the word of God according to the Gospel of Matthew. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was its fall. This parable is a story of comparison and warning. Jesus offers us an example of how, we, how our choices can affect our lives. We now have a, a time of meditation for inner reflection. Sometimes we are beaten by winds and storms in every corner of our lives. Due to our deep faith in Jesus, we find ourselves still standing. What are the storms in your life today? How is your faith providing a solid foundation for you? Jesus says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man. We are very good at acting, but do we hear? Do we listen? What practices in prayer help you hear and listen closely to the word of God?
the parable presents us a choice to be like a wise person or a foolish one. Do we listen to his words and act on them or ignore them and let them wash over us? Our lives reflect the choices we make. Our legacy is the action we take. How can we, through our choices and actions, live wisely? What is the wisdom of this story that still amazes us? I am amazed by the connection between listen and act. It sounds so simple, but it is really the key to live wisely. What about you? For a long time, I have been challenged by the drama of the story. Rain, floods and winds fall with the same force on the two houses. Vanuatu, the focus country of this service, is used to see the forces of nature hitting their houses. The last one was the Category 5 Cyclone Harold. The villages are slowly recovering from the destruction. Climate change is affecting our planet. It hits our houses, farms, health, and livelihoods. We are living in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and we grieve for the millions of loved ones that were lost in this health crisis. We are all living the same drama, but it hits us dif differently, like in the story. Yes, there are many ways to build a house. But what makes the difference is the wisdom we follow. In Jesus' story, Jesus reminds us of the golden rule. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, like in Matthew 7, 12. Yes. What surprises me is that Jesus invites us to look at what surrounds us, such as our house, but also at the decision we can make and reflect what good are we going to do with it. In small things as well in big things, Jesus invites us to put his teaching into practice. I could say also put love or kindness, I would say the same thing. For sure. In the context of climate change and the pandemic, Jesus is calling us to consider our lives beyond ourselves. We would not overcome either challenges individually. We need the community acting love towards one another. And that really amazes me. In the, long, in the long Sermon on the Mount, Jesus thought about peace, love, forgiveness, and concluded with the invitation to hear his words and act on that. In this World Day of Prayer, the sisters of Vanuatu call us to rise and to build our homes, our nations and the world on the words of Jesus. Let's together follow Jesus sharing love, building peace and committing to justice. This is our solid foundation. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we are amazed by Jesus' teaching. Help us to act on his words. Gracious God, 
heal the families wounded by the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Help us care for the ones who are sick and comfort our heart from the losses. Guide our governments to assist the most vulnerable communities hit by the pandemic. Give us wisdom to follow you always. Amen. you and thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us for family and friends home food and water we praise you for leading us to be creative and able to support our families in gratitude we seek to give to the work of the world's day of prayer and dedicate our gifts may they be shared with communities in need both close to home and around the world Amen. Prayers for Vanuatu and the world. Let us be united in prayer with Vanuatu and the world. Everlasting God, the God on whom Vanuatu stands, we ask you to help us stand for peace in our families and our nations. We commit the leaders and people of Vanuatu into your wise hands. We want to stand against the forces of injustice present in our nations. Give us this authority over our islands and nations. We pray that we may live in unity, love and peace in the context of ethnic and cultural diversity like Vanuatu and so many other places around the world. Bind us together in love, peace and joy. We pray for young women in Vanuatu who search for work and meaning, especially those who, hoping for a better life, move to the towns and cities, away from family and friends. May they develop the skills they need to find work, live wisely and fulfil their dreams. We pray for the children of Vanuatu, 
who do not have the opportunity to attend school, and for those on the streets who feel unloved and unwanted. May they find safe shelter and nourishment in their communities and in the embrace of God. May they learn of and trust in God's love through the outreach of others. We remember people living in places prone to natural disasters and the hazards of cyclones, hurricanes and volcanoes. Almighty God, protect communities from disasters and suffering. Heal the souls of the people and let them feel your love. We pray for the Christian community in Vanuatu that they may extend God's justice and love to everyone. May they be a living example of a community built on the strong foundation of Christ. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we come to our act of commitment. After this service, I invite you to find a pebble or a small stone. Hold it and look at it. Your stone is special, like you. Its shape is unique. Its color is unique. Its flaws are unique. God, the house builder, uses each one of us as a stone to build a strong foundation of love. Will we make the commitment to build our lives on this foundation? Will we hear and will we act? Think of this stone as a representation of your personal prayers and commitment to God. Keep your stone in the year ahead as a reminder of this day and to keep in mind the people of Vanuatu. May our lives be built on a strong foundation. Let us repeat the Ni Vanuatu motto, in God we stand. Long God Yumi Stanap. Amen. Thank you. 
welcome God's dwelling presence in and with us. Let God guide you, lead you, restore you and heal your nation. Let God's will be done in your house as it is in heaven. Remember as you go out, everyone who hears the words of Jesus and acts on them will be like a wise person and their house will withstand the floods. Go and build your house on Jesus' words. Go home blessed in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Jesus' word is our strong foundation. We will follow Jesus, the way, the truth and the life. Amen. You're muted, Catherine. Thank you. <laughs> the, thank you to everyone who's taken part in the service today. And thank you to everybody who has uh, shared in some way. Thank you for joining us too. I want to just say a word about the way to make a donation to World Day of Prayer this year, because it's a bit different compared to how it usually is. I will be putting a, uh, a screen up in a moment with uh, various options for how to make a donation. And if you would like to contribute, those gifts will be very gratefully received because as I think you know, uh, the World Day of Prayer supports many different charities around the world who are working with vulnerable communities to give them some extra support and help. 
And so this just leaves me to thank you all for coming today. And I wish you all well and God bless you all.